How is it going, YouTube? My name is Gotcha J. This is your home for Gotcha news, analysis, and reviews. Right now, we are reviewing Nino Kuni Cross Worlds. It is a new mobile game that has come out. A lot of you have a lot of opinions about this game that seem kind of, um out there. Anyways, I'm going to tell you my honest thoughts about the game, the things that I enjoy, the things I don't enjoy. We break it down from gameplay, uh, graphics, monetization, community, all of the jazz that we normally do. Just remember going into this that a 5 is average. So if something gets a 5 out of 10, it does not mean that it's a failure like they tell you in the United States, okay? I'm still struggling with that. No, a 5 out of 10 is average. That's what she said! <laughs> a 7 out of 10 means well above average. That's what she said. So if something scores, you know, a nine, it's pretty superb. If something gets a four, you know, it's it's not the best, but it, you know, it's definitely not the worst we've experienced. That's what she said. <sighs> so keep that in mind as you hear this. Let's go. So first things first, we're going to look at the graphics related to Nino Kuni Cross Worlds. And honestly, I don't think you could look at this game and complain about the graphics. I think that the artistic style that they chose is amazing and it's brilliant. It makes it really feel like there's a lot of hand-drawn elements with the shader that they chose. And because they're going for that hand-drawn field, it allows them to drastically reduce the polygon count. If you look at a lot of the models, you'll find a lot of very obvious flat places. But the texturing that they put on top of those flat pieces, a lot of the time are very, very strong. It'll seem like something is one just block of color. But when you actually get into the details of it, you can see that they have they do a lot to actually like bring shading into play across the world and then they let that shader which is the actual graphical computation of projecting things like the black lines and the shadows and just some of the uh, fresnel that's coming off these characters and they're really letting it shine to really make the world pop if you didn't have that shader active in this game i think you would really see it drag all the way from a nine closer to like a six or maybe even a four the shader in this game and the ip that brings all of these characters to the graphics they're very very strong and you're going to be running around the world or you're going to be viewing a lot of gorgeous landscape a lot of interesting monsters that granted do repeat itself pretty often throughout the course of the game and they just changed its colors but overall, guys, when you look at this as a mobile game, how quickly it runs and how many objects that they're able to put on the screen and how beautiful those objects look, this is actually fascinating from a technical point of view. Nino Kuni and Genshin Impact to me, eh, included because it's Genshin Impact, we're also including Honkai Impact. Those to me are some very technologically like strong versions of graphics and if you are a fan of any of those i do not blame you for thinking that the graphics are what keep you into the game they are top tier within this industry story i have it at a six out of ten now a lot of the a lot of the story aspects and why it's a six out of ten and not higher is because the actual game mechanics, the story and the marketing do not coincide together for me for a seamless storytelling process. The Nino Kuni world space and their delivery model are very childish in nature. It's designed to be safe and secure. It does have its fair share of funny moments. It's very interesting that they thought it was necessary to include Clue's butthole in the game, but hey, I don't understand why that things like that are necessary, but that's the decisions that they made and that makes up their universe. So as an older person playing the game or someone probably old enough to find this video, I don't think that it's going to be something that you truly appreciate. But you if you actually sit there and read it, you will have clever moments, you'll have funny moments, you'll have moments that you appreciate and that make you want to learn a little bit more sometimes. And to me, that is a great thing from a gotcha game especially one that's really leaning on the progression system, the uniqueness and the graphics to carry the weight of this game moving forward. So the fact that you have all of that, plus a strong story, not an amazing story, but a strong story that may not be targeted to you really means that this game has something special going for it. Progression, I have it at an eight out of 10. I think this is where people are going to start to really get on me and not really agree with the things that I'm pushing in front of them. But hear me out. I think the progression is an 8 out of 10. I think that that's the main reason we're all here. We love watching that combat power go up. We love finding ways for our combat power and our actual power to be able to use all of the tools and the efficiency within our system to swing higher than our combat score really lets us. 
And I think that the progression system, all the different avenues in which you can increase that score and how they interact with things are very, very strong. The reasons why it's not higher isn't even the turret system, which I think a lot of you complain about. I actually like the turret system in Nino Kuni, and I can make a completely separate video on why that's justified for an opinion. Now, that's not for me to say that it's a good system. It just means that I understand it and I think it brings longevity to a game that would have lost it weeks ago. So the things that are actually hurting the progression is how ridiculous the actual statistics are in the game, crit and accuracy being the two highest priorities within the game atmosphere, and neither one of them are directly explained to you. I've done a lot of math and a lot of video editing and a lot of taking a lot of time to try to understand what is actually going progression and the combat system it's just very confusing and dewittled so in a lot of ways i think that they are trapping you in time progression it's not so much of a uh, learn amplitude it's more of like a time efficiency type of progression system can you find ways to game the amount of time put into the game to increase that combat score more so than can you use the progression system to find more enjoyment out of the game and because i don't like that trade-off i put it at a 8 out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10 because I think that this game has a lot of brilliant things going for it in this progression system, specifically for the genre of game that they're going. It is a gotcha game, but it's more of an AFK MORPG grind game. And because of the differences between that and a turn-based game and how the gotcha elements play into it and the progression systems play into it, for that specific genre, I think that the, the actual decisions that they made for the progression are very, very smart and well thought out and had a lot of care in it. But I, at its core, I don't agree with the model that they've taken for the progression system. And so even though I think it's well executed, I'm not gonna give it a 10 out of 10. Gameplay, I gave it a six out of 10. I think there are definitely moments where you feel like you are outplaying the thing in front of you, but the majority of the time it's an auto grinder. A lot of the elements in the game that I really like come from the community aspect of it, come from the kingdom and the building and all of the different things that you get to think about, the familiars, the familiar arena, the familiar adventures, all the different game modes that they throw at you, being able to dodge bosses out. But at its core, when you think about games like action RPGs, the actual skill timings, the actual auto attacks, the way the cameras work in this game, I'm not a fan of most of any of those principles, but I think a lot of the modes and the abilities uh, in terms of like what you can do and not so much of like your actual skill abilities, I think a lot of it is like a juxtaposition with each other that plays out positive. I think if they didn't have the breadth of modes and those modes be well thought out, I should add, I think that you would actually see this trend closer to a three or a four. But once again, because they executed the game development and design portion of this so effectively and well that you actually see it at a six out of 10 instead of at a three out of 10. And I'd love to dive into that deeper with you guys if you actually are interested in my thoughts on game design and principles and how it relates to these rankings and specifically with a Nino Kuni because currently it has my attention. Uniqueness 9 out of 10. I don't really have to go into much detail with this. You look around, gorgeous graphics, definitely feels like the world that they're trying to throw you into. There's not much out there that can replicate the feeling that Nino Kuni as an IP gives you. And I've ran into a multiple of people that are playing and still playing the game simply because they love Nino Kuni. That is something that Epic 7 will never get going for it. They cannot just draw people in because they're Epic 7. They have to establish that brand, that brand for them. That is unique to Nino Kuni, is that audience. So uniqueness, if you want to play a Nino Kuni game, this is the only one that you can play. Monetization, I have it a three out of 10. I think a lot of the times the monetization gets in the way of the gameplay, especially when it relates to the tarot system and the introduction of the cryptocurrency. And that isn't to say that the idea of the cryptocurrency in itself is bad. I have a lot of thoughts towards that that aren't really appropriate for this specific ranking video, but I don't, I think that the actual integration point there isn't as harmful as it is in a lot of other games, but I think a lot of the other aspects get in the way of it. But the only reason it's at a three out of 10 and not lower is because of how unnecessary I think it is. I think people really come in from other gacha gang thinking four or five stars are the only way to go. 
When in reality, the more that I play the game, the more resources that I grind and expend into these items and these familiars, I'm learning to realize that I would have been much further along if I prioritized three stars in some capacities and I was more efficient with my thought processes, which would allow me to get to end game and these higher level con uh, content quicker. So when it comes time to do the four and five stars, I can do them that much quicker. I already have the CP gains from the codex of the other attributes. I think that from a monitor point of view, there are a lot of things that free to play players are actually going to benefit that whales and their brute force mechanics of the wallet jutsu aren't really gonna get to experience. And so I think that juxtaposition between free to play and whale is actually pretty healthy for the game. So even though I don't think it's monetized well, I think that it has some things going for it that makes it as a free to play player for you to actually appreciate that the monetization sometimes is holding you back as crazy as that feels. Now, don't take that as a compliment. Three out of 10, not good. Two points below average. Now, the last but not least with Nino Kuni is the community. It is a nine out of 10. This game is custom built to drive you towards friendships, towards talking points, towards interaction. The kingdom developments, the dominions, the chat interfaces. Well, don't get me started on the chat interfaces. I think it could do it better, but for a mobile game, it's pretty strong. I think a lot of what's going on in the community aspect of Nino Kuni is starting to find its way outside of the game and really start to grow it organically. And that's really, really, really saying a lot. This game had a huge push initially from a lot of content creators that were paid to be there. And I think a lot of people left with them, but those that stayed are actually slowly beginning to create organic pushes of their own, creating organic content, really extending an olive branch out to other people of like, hey, there are a lot of things that kind of sing wrong about this game on the surface, but the more you dig into it, it kind of feels a little right. And I think over time, Nino Kuni is going to be here for a very, very long time. And I think that it's a very healthy community at that. So overall, I have it at a 7.14. It is currently my fifth highest gacha game. And I think it's a couple tweaks away from being amongst the best. And that's saying a lot considering the best is about 1.6 points higher than it, which would mean that the monetization would essentially have to go from a three to a 10 to get it within talking distance of the best of the best. But still, it being fifth overall is super strong. I really think that people should give Nino Kuni a healthy chance and really rethink some of the attributes that are there. I I am not coming at this from a biased point of view. I am having a ton of fun towards this game. I am not paid to have this opinion. I have never been paid by these people to have any sort of opinion. I have just enjoyed it the way that I've enjoyed it. And as someone that really breaks down game design and mechanics, I truly think that they made some smart decisions, albeit that help monetize the game. I love you. Be the peace. Peace be with you.